fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Leader Class Beast Wars Universe Tigerhawk from the Transformers Legacy United line from Hasbro. So this is one that I'm super excited about. I've always really liked Tigerhawk. He didn't really get much time in Beast Wars, if I'm being honest. Uh, I kind of remember watching like the last five episodes of Beast Wars back in the day as a kid, and it was like a really power-packed week, because I think like Monday they introduced uh, Transmetal 2 Black Arachnia. I think Tuesday Megatron got the dragon form. Uh, Tigerhawk showed up on Wednesday, and then I believe he was immediately killed in the next episode, or towards the end of the next episode, fighting the Nemesis. And then obviously, you know, the, the second part of the finale was that Friday. So that was like a really exciting week those last five episodes of season three they really packed up a lot into that uh so yeah i mean maybe three maybe i'm misremembering the order maybe tiger hawk uh showed up and was around for three but no more than three episodes <laughs> and i just always thought it was a really cool idea i love the design i love these like claws as the shoulder pads i just always thought that was a really cool look but the thing about the original toy that always confused me was in the show his color scheme was white purple and green and the original toy from what i remember was uh blue uh green and white so i always thought it was kind of weird that they switched out the purple for the blue i mean it still looked pretty good but i just think this is a much cooler color scheme and so now they have given us the correct color scheme on this updated version and i don't even really think we've seen tiger hawk since back in the day it's not a typical um design that you could really use or repurpose i don't think a lot of things got repainted as tiger hawk i could be wrong maybe there's a bot con set somewhere that i didn't pay attention to i don't really follow a lot of those repaints because i never got to go to those shows um but you know it's just it's a character that just seems like in the fiction it didn't get much time but i think it's pretty popular i think it's a beloved character and just a really crazy design i mean it's a white tiger with giant hawk wings you can't really go wrong. So anyway, here we have uh, the uh, plastic-free packaging still. The window is not present here, so you can reach right in and touch the figure. But you got some great artwork of the alt mode here on the front. Got some great artwork of the robot mode here on the side. Uh, up top here, we just have the Legacy United logo. Your standard barcodes and, you know, legal mumbo-jumbo down there. Got your one half of the United mural. And then over here on the back, we got some nice product shots of the robot mode and the alt mode. Um, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a ton of fun. I'm going to go ahead and get him out of the packaging here and we'll take a closer look. Here is Tiger Hawk out of the packaging. And I think they did a pretty good job with this one. I'm actually really excited. Uh, everything feels, you know, pretty full, pretty substantial. The wings look good here uh, from the top. Now they are a little hollow here on the underside, which is kind of a bummer because it's facing forward for the robot mode. But if they did it the other way, then they'd be hollow for the beast mode. And I feel like if the wings are going to be prioritized, the, the beast mode makes more sense to prioritize them there. Uh, there are a couple spots that we can fill in with accessories. We'll get to that in a moment. But I mean, the legs feel nice and full, you know, in the back here, nothing's really open. There's not really any hollow spots on the insides of the leg or anything like that. I don't love the way this looks. Uh, luckily, that's on the back and in the front. It's hidden with this like feather skirt piece. <laughs> but if this was just the front of the robot mode, that would look pretty terrible. But luckily, like I said, we have this feather skirt piece here, so it's not a big deal. Uh, we have the maximal symbol here on the chest. I think that looks fantastic. We have those uh, talons here for the shoulder pads that I've always really enjoyed. And then that head sculpt is just amazing i think they did such a great job the purple head with the green visor the eyes the teeth all that just looks really sharp i really like that quite a bit i think that came out really nice i also kind of like how the helmet's asymmetrical i think that's kind of cool so yeah just all in all i think they did a really nice job with that we got the tiger head over here uh, just like the original toy you have this kind of globe section that's done in translucent green plastic and it does lift up so it doesn't hinder the shoulder articulation, which is nice. And even over here for the tiger head, this little section will open up so it doesn't hinder the shoulder articulation, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's get into articulation. So heads on a ball joint can look down subtly. Uh, can't really look up all that much, but can turn side to side. No issue. Can tilt side to side very slightly, but not really that much. Uh, so the shoulder has a rotation here. Uh, like I mentioned before, this piece can go out to the side and that lifts up so as not to move anything or lose anything there. 
Now, unfortunately, when you do come back down, this likes to disconnect, as you can kind of see, which is kind of a bummer. And I don't even really know why. I don't think that needs to do anything for transformation, so I don't even really know why. I mean, the hinge is needed, but I don't think the disconnect is needed for anything. And maybe I'm wrong and I'm misremembering. So that can be a little bit of a pain to get out of there. So when you put the arm all the way out to the side, and then it wants to bend at that, that you can see right here there's a tab, and this needs to go in and snap in. So... You kind of have to grab a hold of this and move it around because it's a tight joint. Maybe over time that'll loosen up. Not a huge problem, but just, you know, a bit annoying. You do have a bicep swivel right there. You have 90 degrees, maybe even slightly over 90 degrees there in the elbow. Um, don't have a wrist swivel because of the way it transforms into the forearm. You can see that there's a pin right there. That's kind of a bummer. I feel like that wouldn't have been impossible to do but this opens up so you can see that's one solid piece so bit of a bummer that there's no wrist swivel um if we move this piece there is a waist swivel there so you can utilize that um really nice ratchets here in the knee i'm sorry the waist <laughs> we'll get to the knee this isn't even the waist this is the hip body parts i'm good at it anyway you have a really nice ratchet there, but then you also have a separate joint out to the side. So really nice range of motion there. Uh, thigh swivel right there. You have nice knee bend. Uh, it has that kind of fill-in piece, but then eventually it stops. So <laughs> you can do a nice range of motion in the knee, but the fill-in piece is only going to carry through to about there. But I at least appreciate that it's we've got something there, so that's nice. Um, you have a little bit of ankle tilt. Actually, all right, you do have more than I thought. So really almost 90 degrees in ankle tilt there. Um, you can move this a little bit, but it's because, so there's this kind of cool like piston piece here, and it's in a little track. Uh, for the beast mode, this is going to kind of push in, and then it'll kind of move along the track, and then the other piece will come around the back. So that's kind of cool. But because of that, you don't really get a lot of front to back unless you're transforming it um and to do so you have to move this purple piece out of the way so i mean you could try to you know pull this back and move this around i don't really know why you'd need to but you do get nice side to side tilt and then you have the heel back here that can move if you want to utilize that so all in all i think the robot mode is very successful i think he looks pretty cool um, but we can go ahead and start getting into his accessories. Oh, I didn't talk about the wings. Let's talk about the wings first. So, nice range of motion for the wings. You can do kind of a 45 degree angle. You can do all the way against the body. Or you can do all the way straight out. You also have another hinge there. So if you wanted to do kind of like he's wrapped up. Or if we put the arm down and you want to kind of use that as like a shield or something. You could do that. Also, these can move all the way around. So if you wanted to do kind of an up and down like that kind of a pose or all the way down like this, you can put them all the way out to the side like he's flying. So you have a lot of nice options with the wings, which I appreciate. I kind of like to do maybe like a 45 degree angle. Although I'll be honest, I kind of do like the look of this. Maybe not all the time, but I kind of like that too. But yeah, I kind of like to do maybe 40, I like 45 degree angles, I guess. That's what I'm always going on about. So uh, kind of something like that. Gives you a lot of nice range of motion, so you're not getting in the way with the shoulders or anything like that. But if you want it to be closer to the body, absolutely an option. So I think that's it for articulation now. Let's talk about his accessories. All right, so first up, he comes with this little kind of wrist cannon and this can pop on to either forearm. Uh, I like to put it on this one because when you're doing the transformation, you can actually leave it on here all during the transformation. And that's where it would store in the beast mode. So I kind of just like to pop it on here and leave it on here. But it's very simple. It's just a little wrist gun. Uh, technically, if you wanted him to just hold it in his hand, you could do that as well. I feel like that doesn't look as cool. So I like to just pop it on here, and then I pretty much just leave it on there all the time. Uh, you also have these guns, which are, you know, basic. Not really a much to them. Have some hollow spots, but I don't think that's necessarily a problem. And I think they should be Blast Effect compatible. Let me see. Do I have a Blast Effect here? 
yeah so for these larger ones you could pop that in there and that would totally work um how these work obviously he can go ahead and hold them in his hand if you like so you can go ahead and do that uh, but the other thing is you can bring them over here and if i kind of move this out of the way and we'll just bring the wing back so we can check this out so you have this piece here which kind of already has like a little tri-gun situation going on here but if you bring this out you can see there's a connection piece here and then you want to line these up so you can see that there's a little tab and there is a little tab slot in there so you want to line this up so that it goes like this and then that way you can come down and tab into that spot which can be a little snug do i not have it lined up which sometimes i misalign it turn that you have to really make sure that it's there we go okay so it snaps in really nice and solid now that does fill in some of that that space there which is nice uh but the other thing is you can lift this up and you can rotate this around now you're going to get to a point where it almost seems like you can't keep going because it has these kind of like spots here on the side but they will go into this little slot right here you just kind of have to keep going you have to kind of push it and then that will fold into that slot like that so if you want to have these completely vertical you can of course you could utilize that in the beast mode or if you just like the look of them vertical on his back you could do that so again you have options with that so you have two configurations for those you can hold them in the hand that's all really nice the other thing that you get so you get two of those i guess i'll go ahead and i'll we'll plug the other one in real quick just so you can see plug that in there and then bring this down and that will snap into place. He also has two wing sword missile pieces. And I feel like they're going to do something like this for Silverbolt. I feel like they're just going to probably steal exactly how these work for Silverbolt. Because he had a very similar thing where he had feathers that could be missiles or they could be swords. So you can go ahead and pop these in the hand like so. Or if you want, of course, you can put them back into the wings. So how this works is you have this large peg hole right there and there's a peg right here. And so you just pop that on and now it's just seamlessly integrated into the wings. So I think that's kind of cool. So out of all these accessories, I guess he's got five in total. He's got the two guns, he's got the two feather swords, and then he's got this little cannon. You can have everything on him at the same time. Most of it just stores away, which I think is kind of cool. I think that's really neat. I appreciate that. He's got quite the arsenal but it's hidden it's stored it's ready to go when he needs it very cool so again i like all the accessories i like the robot mode i think the articulation's pretty good um yeah i'm pretty psyched about this guy let's go ahead let's get into the transformation it's an interesting one so you can leave all the accessories on there uh even the one on the wrist like i mentioned before which is kind of nice so we're going to start off by opening up these little sections here and then we're going to just rotate the fist in there and then close that back up very simple now the directions have you do this like way later in the game but i don't know why i feel like it's just as easy to just do it right now you don't need those fists for anything later uh so basically we're going to come back here and we're going to grab this whole section and we are going to pull this well actually before we do that there's a lot of stuff going on so let's we'll move these claws out of the way you can just kind of lift these up and if we move the arm out of the way so the way this is the whole eagle like talon leg piece is all here on the inside you can kind of see it in here it does peg into the side of this white piece so if i move the wings out of the way now we can see it a little bit better and this has to kind of unhook and then move up so you can see that there was a tiny little peg right there that was pegged in so you kind of have to unhook these let me get the wings out of the way unpeg that and kind of move that up now we can go ahead grab this white piece here and this will untab like that so you can see that there was a tab here it was pegged in if you can see that spot right there i might even want to put the wings up just for I don't know you're constantly moving this stuff around <laughs> because this just kind of needs to fall back here and be out of the way for most of the transformation um so now they they might come unpegged on their own but there was a little tab slot right there and a little tab right there if they're still pegged in lift them up lift both of the arms up like that now we're going to come to these white sections here and they are going to 
untab from the purple part of the midsection. So you can see that there was a tab slot right there and a tab right there, and we're going to do that on both sides. Then you want to kind of bring these back and you can rotate them. So where this tiny little pin is right there, they can rotate down and then you want to just kind of get them back out of the way. Now, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Just have them hang out there for now. So now you can see we have the entire like talon section. We're going to bring these forward. They were just kind of hiding out in there. So if you wanted to give them creepy chest talons, you could. All right, next we're going to split this section in half. So lift that up just enough that you can go ahead and split this in half. And then this will kind of rotate out to the side. So, I mean, there are going to be clearance issues <laughs> because you just you have so many moving pieces at once, I feel like. Um, this is going to come down. You're going to press this about as tight to the chest as you can. And then this is going to come, you're going to take the head, rotate that 180 degrees, and then that's all going to just rotate here into what was the chest cavity. And then you want to bring this down, just kind of fold these back now. And you can see that there's this little connection here and there's this white tab. This white tab will go on the left of this. So this will come all the way down and kind of tab in there. It's not a super tight connection, but it's just enough to kind of keep it in place. So next up, we're gonna take this whole section. You can see that there's a mushroom peg right there. This is gonna rotate 90 degrees like so. We're gonna straighten out the arm and we're gonna fold this in and this is gonna collapse on this pin here. Now you can see that there's a tab right there and that tab needs to go in. There's a tab slot inside here. You have to make sure you press it until you hear it click. If you don't hear it click, it's not going to be fully tabbed in, and that's going to really mess up some other connections that we need to do in a moment, which is an issue I had the first time I was transforming this. Um, I'm going to kind of just bring this out of the way as best that I can. We're going to bring these around, and now you can see that there is a tab here. And that is going to go into a tab slot right there. So this should come around. And as long as you have this purple part that I talked about pegged in as seamlessly, like as close to it as you possibly can, and you hear that click, you shouldn't have any issue getting these to come around and peg in where they're supposed to go. Because it's kind of hard to see if it's happening or not. I don't know why this side always I have no issue with. Oh, this is not straight. That's why I got to turn this around. Okay, I had it kind of cockeyed. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but a lot of moving pieces. Let me get this pegged in here. All right, I'm going to need a second. It's, it's easier to do closer. Okay, so the purple part I had talked about while I was moving things around, it had popped out. That's why I was having a problem. So you can see why you really need to make sure that that goes all the way in and pops in as close as possible. And you hear that audible click because you will not get these two pieces to peg in to what was the shoulder if it doesn't have that. So now that that's all set, we can lift this section and then rotate this down and it'll kind of just act as like a nice little cover up for this area. And then we're gonna bring this forward and you can see that there's a little tab slot right there, and that's going to tab in to that little tab right there. So we bring this down, and we get this to connect like so. Okay, that was just also me closing up that neck piece from earlier. That That's really tight, honestly. That shoulder opening bit on the back of the tiger head that opens so the shoulder can move around, it's really snug. But anyway, so that's all in there now. Now we can go ahead and plug this part back in. We really haven't done anything or moved that around at all. It's literally just you have to pop it off so that you can uh, just move everything else around. It's really just a clearance thing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this section and rotate it 90 degrees at the bicep so that this little tab slot here will line up with this little tab here. So this comes in and that will tab in there. 
And then we can take, let me move the wings out of the way. Like I said, I feel like you're just constantly moving the wings throughout most of this process. Let me get this eagle foot out of the way. So now we can take the tiger head and kind of push that up. And you can see it's kind of the similar thing. Let me do this again because it's a similar thing with that other shoulder where you have to kind of click that in so that when you're moving this up, everything goes with it. And it's it's kind of stupid, but I don't really like those extra shoulders. And I don't really know what they're for, I'll be honest. I wish it would just stay up, but there we go. Next, we're going to bring these in. So we have a connection here, which is going to tab in there. And then there's a tab right here, which is going to go in there. So this just comes up and this tabs in and really shores all of that up, which is nice. So we're going to do that again on this side. And then you can kind of see this is pretty much taking shape at this point. Uh, just kind of bring the eagle legs down. And like I said, you can leave that on. That's where this would store in the beast mode anyway, so I just leave it on all the time. And then the last finishing touch here is to just open up this purple section here on the back of the leg. Then you are going to push this through the leg, and that little piston piece will kind of ride in the track that it's on. And then this folds up like this. The directions make it look like this pushes in a lot tighter but I've tried it and it really feels like I'm gonna break it if I push it any tighter, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, these just kind of hang out there on the back of that. So do that again. This flips up, sits back here, push the leg through like that, fold that up, and then just bring the foot from the back. And there we go. We have Tiger Hawk. Fully transformed into beast mode. Here is Tiger Hawk in beast mode. I like it a lot. I really like the white tiger head. I think that looks pretty good. The orange for the eyes really pops. You can open and close the mouth, which is a nice touch. You have the stripes. Not a ton of stripes, but gets it across. Also, again, we have that asymmetrical look, just like with the robot head. You can see how it's different on the one. This side has more fur. Definitely more of kind of a traditional tiger look on this side. And then this is kind of like more robotic looking, which is just kind of an interesting touch. Uh, you have that kind of translucent green little crystal right there. Uh, I mean, articulation wise, these are, they were the legs. So you can go out to the side. You can go that same ratchet front to forward, front to forward, front to back. <laughs> you have the swivel there. Uh, you know, you have the knee joint there. You might just have to move the purple piece as you kind of move that around. But yeah, overall, really nice amount of articulation in the front legs here because they were the legs of the robot mode. You can still do everything you used to be able to do with the wings. You can move these up. You can flip these around if you would like. And again, just kind of have to push that in there to lock that in place. But then you can have those guns on the front or you can just stick with the tinier guns here, whichever you prefer. So I think this is pretty cool. I really like it quite a bit. You have the little tail feather up here. You have the uh, eagle kind of, you know, talon leg. So there's a ball joint here. Nice range of motion. You can move that all around. You have a hinge here, a hinge here, a hinge here. And those are all really nicely painted. I think they did a good job with the eagle legs. Yeah, overall, I just really like this a lot. And I love that they use the purple. It's more show accurate. I think this color scheme just works better. With the original toy being that kind of blue, it wasn't bad. It didn't look terrible, but I just think the purple works so much better. And I will say, you know, the original toy, I remember having a lot of clearance issues as well. You know, spinning the shoulders because you have the one arm. Like this, it transforms fairly similarly from what I remember. Now, I probably haven't looked at that original toy in decades at this point. But I do remember, like, you know, the arms having to rotate and the one going up here and the one hiding in the belly but you had that big globe piece uh, in the stomach and they found a way to hide that. And I think that really works out well with that, you know, uh, torso kind of condensing and covering that up. So he's just kind of got a normal white belly. I really appreciate that. I think it just looks a little bit more solid, a little bit more streamlined. And I feel like, you know, this body here for the, uh, we'll say the main kind of tiger-esque body is pretty tight and pretty compact. And I think they did a nice job there. And then, of course, we have the giant wings and the blasters and everything we're accustomed to up top here. 
yeah, I just think it's a lot of fun. I like it a lot. I think Tiger Hawk is pretty fantastic. I mean, yeah, there are a couple things that I don't love. I don't love the hollowness on the wings over here in this section. I don't love whatever's going on with this connection here for the shoulder. I understand that you have to kind of swivel that down for the transformation. Um, at first, I didn't realize that's how it was working because it's so covered up by that piece in the back here. But you do have to kind of disconnect that to get the head to be able to then fill in that space. But it's just annoying when you're trying to move stuff around and that's constantly trying to disconnect. But it's not a huge thing. It's just like a minor thing. Um, I love the head sculpt. I love the color scheme. All the accessories are fantastic. The transformation is definitely a little cumbersome. But once you do it once or twice, you know, you kind of figure it out. It becomes a little bit more intuitive. It's really just a lot of kind of opening everything up, swiveling some stuff around, and then kind of closing it back up, if that makes sense. Uh, but honestly, I really like it a lot. I think they did an excellent job with this. I'm really happy. Definitely one of my favorite designs from Beast Wars. So happy to kind of have a proper version of this guy in the correct color scheme. And like I said, it's just it's a little bit more compact in that Beast Mode than the original toy was. At least from what I'm remembering, it has been a while. And I have no idea where that is at this point. I believe I have it somewhere still, but my Beast Wars stuff's been packed away for years. So, um, yeah, I just like it a lot. Like I said, not really too much to complain about. Couple of smi couple of minor, couple of minor nitpicks is what I was trying to say. Uh, but in any case, overall, I really do think this guy's a ton of fun, and I definitely recommend checking him out, especially if you're a Beast Wars fan. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks so much for watching.